Well, good morning, and welcome to Mornings with Nan and Eddie. Today we're going to talk about being just who you are, and we have a lot of special things to do today. But the first thing I'm going to do is talk about being who you are, and sometimes thinking you're not sure who you are. We don't always know right away what we want to be when we grow up, and sometimes we're grown up like Nan and Eddie, and we still think we want to do different things. But underneath, I'm still Nana Nettie. I am an authentic, a real person with real dreams and real talents and real gifts. And all of you have gifts of your own and talents of your own. And it's you that gets to figure out what that is. So don't ever let anybody tell you who you are, who you're not, but work with adults and teachers and best friends to figure out what it is that you have a desire to do the rest of your life. So, right now, a desire in Nana's life is to be with kids and help them figure things out. Part of that is sharing who I have been as a child and as a mom and as a Nana and as a worker in the world. So today, sit back and Get ready to learn an art project. And remember, you can always go to to YouTube and the instructions will be down here. You can always go back to YouTube and rewatch it so you can do the art projects. Okay. All right. Our first segment is called Treasures. And Treasures is about things in Nana. Nettie's life that means so much to her that she's kept them a long time or still believes in the lessons she learned. So take a look at these treasures. This is just a little bit of the things that Nana Nettie has saved over the years. And guess what? There's a lot more of them to come. And each of them have a special story for Nana Nettie to tell from the past. Some of them are from my grandparents, my parents, my siblings, and my children. And a lot are from my childhood. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about this storybook. So look at this very special book of Nan and Eddie's. It's called Read Aloud Funny Stories, written by Jane Thayer. This is a beloved book of Nan and Eddie's. I loved it so much as a child. I think I got them around the time I learned to read in second grade. But look how you know how old it is. Christmas, 1958, December 24th. Now, how about a nice math problem for you? That would be 2020, that's the year now, and 1958. To figure out how long ago this was written, you need to subtract 1958 from 2020. You can do that after you watch the video. So let's read. Here I am. It's story time. And we're going to use the special book I showed you earlier. Read aloud funny stories. First, I'll tell you where we're at. This is Nana's special quiet room. I have a little rocking chair and a lamp. I use this lamp when I'm reading at night. But I come in here all the time just to rest and look out my window, but especially to take time to read. A quiet place in your house to read, that's a special thing. Even if you kind of have to build a fort and, or sit underneath the dining room table or out on your front porch or in your backyard under a tree. If you're in an apartment now because we have to stay there, Take a couple of pillows. Maybe it's just sitting on your bed. But your special quiet place to read a special story. 
Today we're going to read a really great story about a kitty cat. The name of the story is The Cat Who Thought He Was People. Now, when I was little, the teacher used to read to us and there were no pictures all the time. And that's what this book is like. This book has one picture per story, sometimes two, and they're done in black and white sketch. That means somebody used a pen to, to draw that picture. So what happens when there's not a lot of pictures to look at? You have to put on your listening cap and you have to imagine the pictures in your mind. And that means listen really closely. Let's begin. The cat who thought he was people. Freddie was a cat who didn't know he was a cat. He thought he was people. He lived in a house with Mrs. Bucklestone, just like people do. He slept on a bed like people. He ate out of dishes like people. He even sat on a chair and watched television like people. And that was our picture. It never entered Freddy's head that he wasn't people. Freddy sat on his front porch and joined the air. He saw strange cats going by. He said, strange cats going by. But he never said hello because he didn't think he was a cat. <laughs> One night, Freddy had been out for a stroll before he went to bed. He was sitting in front of the door, waiting for it to open when the strange cat came by. The strange cat said, Ha! You are the cat that doesn't think he's a cat. I am not a cat, said Freddy indignantly. The strange cat said, You are too. I can prove it. Freddy said, you can not. Then he said, how can you? The strange cat said, come with me. Freddy knew he was people, but he wondered how the strange cat could prove he was a cat. The door didn't open, so he went along. The strange cat said, look at that moon. Isn't that beautiful? Freddy said, yes. The strange cat said, well, that proves you're a cat. Cats always think the moon is beautiful. Come on. They came to a fence. Some cats were sitting on the fence practicing their songs. Freddy began to practice his songs too. The strange cat said, that proves you're a cat. Cats always practice their songs on the fence. Freddy thought, I did enjoy practicing my songs on the fence, but I know I'm not a cat. The strange cat said, come on. They went through a garden. The strange cat said, do you smell something delicious? <laughs> Freddy said, mmm. -hmm. The strange cat said, that is catnip growing. Nobody but a cat thinks catnip smells good and delicious. Have a taste. Freddy nibbled. Mm -hmm. The strange cat said, is it good? Freddy rolled over and over. It was so good. The strange cat said, well, you're certainly a cat. Nobody likes catnip but cats. Freddy said, they don't? I thought I was people. The strange cat said, come on. They went through a field. Freddy heard rustling in the grass. Suddenly away he went, chasing
seen the rustle in the grass, the strange cat said, that was a mouse. Do you like to chase little mice in the grass? Freddy said, oh yes. No question about you being a cat, said the strange cat. Who but a cat ever chases a mouse? Come on! They went into the dark woods where the moon shines through the trees. They had mysterious adventures, the strange cat said. Do you like mysterious adventures? Freddy said, yes, they're fun. The strange cat said, that proves without a doubt that you are a cat. Cats always like mysterious adventures. Freddy said, they do? I guess I am a cat. And all the time I thought I was people. Since I'm a cat, I'm going to live outdoors from now on. I'm going to catch mice and I'm going to have some more of these mysterious adventures. I am never going to go home and watch TV again. Just then, far away, he heard Mrs. Bucklestone calling in a high, clear voice. Here, Freddy, 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 here, Freddy, Freddy, Freddy. Excuse me, Freddy said. Goodbye. <laughs> and off he leaped. He forgot about living outdoors. Freddy went racing through the mysterious woods with the moon shining through the trees. He went bounding across the field where the mouse rustled in the grass. He streaked past the catnip growing in the garden. He jumped the fence where the cats were practicing songs. He shot straight through the front door that Mrs. Bucklestone closed behind him. Mrs. Bucklestone said, where have you been? And she gave him a dish of milk. When Freddy finished the milk, he took a bath. How do cats give baths? <laughs> he went in and sat on his chair and watched television. But he kept thinking about the moonlight and the cats practicing their songs and catnip. <laughs> he thought, Possibly, I could be a cat. He thought about the mouse and the grass and mysterious adventures in the woods. He thought, could I possibly be a cat? When the two clocks in the house had both struck 10 o'clock, Mrs. Bucklestone turned off the television. She locked the door. She carried Freddy upstairs and put him on a warm blanket on the foot of her bed. She went to bed. Freddy heard something far away. He sat up and twitched his ears. He thought, wish I were out in the moonlight having mysterious adventures. Then he heard nothing more. And finally he snuggled down on the blanket. The blanket felt so good that suddenly Freddy didn't want to be anywhere else in the world. So he thought sleepily. Silly, wasn't I, thinking I was a cat. Well, Freddy the kitty was pretty funny, wasn't he? You know, thinking that he was people. Well, I can kind of see why he thought that, because people tend to treat their kitties like people. They give them big beds to sleep in. Some of them sleep under the covers. And, you know, they get people food and... Oh, just all the luxuries sometimes that people get. They're not used to being out in the wild anymore. I think it's funny that kitties do like to watch TV. Nana's kitties do. So you know how Nana and Eddie said that you should talk to your friends and your family and teachers, people you respect to help figure out who you might be? Well, that's kind of what Freddie did. It was a strange cat, but... He must have known that this cat had some information that he could use to learn from. And then he made a choice. What do you think his choice was? Do you think he was going to stay in the house all day and be a people cat? Or do you think he went outside and played like a cat? That tells you that you can have different sides that are really important 
Part of you that wants to just sit and watch a little TV and relax. Part of you that might want to cook what you're eating. Maybe you like to sing. Maybe not like a cat on a fence, but maybe you like to sing. Whatever it is you like to do, do a little bit of everything. But what's really important is being true to who you are on the inside. Nan and Eddie wants you to learn to be a kind and loving person. Somebody that can be a good friend and a good listener to somebody else. And then when you're practicing being just who you are, then you're always going to be coming from a place where you're true to yourself. Then you'll be true to others. That means no lies, only the truth. Lovingly tell people the truth. And sometimes only when they ask. The main thing is loving yourself for who you are. Don't pretend to be somebody you're not. And don't wish you were somebody else because you've been given very special gifts and talents that are all your own. Love math? Oh, uh, well, Anna and Eddie kind of likes it but doesn't love it. I would turn to you for help with my math. You love science? Well, I like those science experiments. But I don't know the deep things about chemistry and that. How about art? Oh, Nana loves art. And I love to teach art. And some people can. So I teach them. So here we go. Let's do an art project, okay? So just like Freddy, sometimes we don't want to be who we really are. And what they usually call that is... Wearing a mask. So we all know what masks are. Well, right now during coronavirus and um, going out in public, they're asking us all to wear some sort of mask. Here's one that Nan and Eddie has. You know, it's a, it's a good one. I use it for my art projects when I'm working with glass. It has foam here and it has this little thing here and it tightens down and it, it works really well, but this isn't the kind of mask. This mask protects us from things getting in and things getting out. It, when, when I wear it for glass, it's so particles of glass can't get in here. When we're wearing a mask and we don't want people to know who we are, sometimes we call it Halloween because that's a good time when we wear masks, right? We wear masks because we're pretending to be somebody else. But that's about having fun at a party or covering up our physical body to pretend like we're somebody else. But what's it called when you're pretending to be somebody else? Like Freddy the cat trying to be a human being? That's a different way of wearing a mask. We're trying to hide who we are underneath or trying to pretend to be somebody we're not. And that's never a good place to be for very long. So what we're going to do today is play around with masks just because it's the theme and let's let's make a couple of masks and have fun with it. So look what Nettie found. These are called templates. It's something I could take off of the internet and someday I'll teach you how to get images off of the internet. But for now, if you know how to do it, you can do that. But Nana Nettie's gonna put a link on my my website at Moments with Nettie so that you can make these yourselves. And here is another. This is a page where there's all these ideas of how to dress up your kitty. And you can print several off. So if you just want to do it quickly, you can go ahead and get your colors out and color on here. 
and then cut it out. These ideas here are to show you, oh, you can choose between this nose or this nose or this nose or do a nose that you want. You can put triangles in and color those for the ears. You can draw whiskers on. And look at the different eyelashes you could copy. Let's do one together and see what we come up with. You can use all different colors. You can use all kinds of paper. You could use all colors of paper. Let's make a template. So first we're going to sew. We're just going to use this one template here to cut out for our base. We'll cut around it. So how do we cut out the eyeballs? Here's a trick. Take a pointy pencil and poke a hole right through here. Just gently push it and twist and push. Now pull out the pencil and look. Oh, it looks like a cross-eyed cat. Now you can put the tip of your scissors in and go around. Annette has cut out the paper template, but then I traced it onto some cardboard like this. So we're not going to use this today because what I would like you to do is when you find a piece of cardboard and trace it on, have an adult cut this out. So then you'll always have a thicker template to draw around. Write template on it. T-E-M-P-L-A-T-E. -E. And keep it someplace so you can use it over and over again. So we're going to use some cardstock. Cardstock. Can you hear it? How it sounds even thicker than computer paper. This was printed on computer paper. And it's just very flexible. This doesn't flex as much. So now we have white paper and black paper. So you can see Nana Nettie has used her template a lot. Let's go this way with our paper. That way we could get two if we want. So just take your marker. You can use a pencil, but Nettie is using a black marker so you can see. And very carefully trace around, all the way around. One more. So the trick to tracing on black paper is using a white pencil a white colored pencil. So let's start that. So you can see that I didn't get it right here. So just put the template right back on and draw around it. Same here, we can connect the lines. When we cut, when you cut on the outside, Cut on the inside of the line. When you cut the eyes out, cut around the outside of the eyes. Okay, Nettie's going to cut now. Let's color. When we have white paper, we have lots of choices. When I look at this, I get to choose any of this. And I think first I love eyelashes, but I'm going to make my own eyelashes up. I'm going to do curly Q eyelashes. Curly Q eyelashes. And then for the ears, I'm going to use triangles. See the triangles right here? 
and right here. And while I'm here, I'm gonna choose a nose. I like pink, but I like hearts. I'm gonna put a bow in its hair. So let's go. A triangle here and color it in. You can choose anything you want, any colors you want, any kind of paper you want. Triangle here, that's two triangles. One, two, and the heart nose. Oh boy, there's my heart nose. And I think I want a turquoise bow, a big blue bow. So I'm going to do an oval here, an oval here, and a square here. Then connect, and connect, and do the bow, just a ribbon, freehanded, freehanded, just like that. And color it in. Color it in. Now, let's fill in. The whiskers, straight line, straight line, out like this, like that, like that, like that, just fast. And because I want the eyes to stand out, I'm putting this on a piece of scrap paper and drawing around here. I just don't want to get my table dirty, so I'm doing this. Okay. So I wanted to show you a trick about painting with the black. You'll have to use your imagination and think of different ways of doing it. Nan and Nettie actually has used what you call a chalk marker. And that's how I've done all the white, and the eyelashes, and the button nose that I chose. For the gold, there's gold pens, gold markers, and they just make really shiny, shiny, shiny marks like that. There are gel pens. You can use glitter and buttons and rickrack. White crayons will work. You can use your imagination. We're done. So we could either punch two holes and put elastic through it, but I don't have any elastic or ribbons, but I have a better idea. Let's use popsicle sticks or any kind of stick you could find. You could use a popsicle stick, a tongue depressor, or you could always use a pencil. We're going to use the ah stick the tongue depressor. So we're just gonna lay it here and we're gonna add a little tape to that and just tape it on, just like this. Now we'll get one more piece, this time to go across here. I'm using scotch tape and don't worry about going over like this. I'll, we'll fix that, like that. And then we take our little scissors just cut off that extra scotch tape. You don't want it sticking to your face. So here's a little safety trick. If you have a plain pencil that has not been sharpened, then it's just as easy to use this as a stick as your popsicle sticks. And you just tape them on just like the other one. But if all you have is a pointy pencil, make sure that you scribble down. You see, Nana Nanny scribbles down and then there's no point. And then tape it on, but use two pieces of tape here first. One going sideways and one going long ways. And then put two more pieces of tape over there. And one on the bottom. There. It's safe now. And then remember 
to trim the tape off the eyes. And guess what? I'm a kitty. Isn't that fun? So use your imagination and hopefully you've got paper. You know, if you have to use a brown paper bag, get your paints out. Just get creative, practice your cutting. And remember, masks can be a fun thing. They can be a pretend thing. You can put on a little play, like you can be the puppet. This is a fun mask. Halloween and and playtime and make up plays, make different characters, have a cat play, make all kinds of animals. Now, Nettie has one more fun project really quick. My cats were getting a little jealous that I was making kitty masks to wear to pretend like I was a kitty. Well, they told me they wanted to pre pretend it. Well, my kitty said they wanted to pretend. My kitties were getting pretty jealous because I was making kitty masks to pretend like I'm a kitty. So they want me to make masks for them so they can pretend like they're people and other animals. Well, we'll see what we can do. are good masks too. They protect us from pollens if you have allergies. They protect us from germs. When you're a construction worker or if you're working with glass and different kind of materials and art, they protect you. The mask that's not good is the mask that doesn't fit you. If you're pretending to be somebody because you're not sure about who you are, that's not a good mask to wear for very long. So let's work on being just who we are and being proud of what we do and being good people. And Nana and Eddie wants you to go out into the world and be real and be the loving self that you can be. Be a first responder in love. First responders wear special masks bigger than this. But first responders in love only have to take out their heart and their truth and be happy to be around other people. Show someone your sunshine. Where is your joy? Your joy will come from being exactly who you are and who you were made to be. So go out and show your sunshine to someone and a lot of sunshine will come back to you. Do you always know?